Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Cast, everyone. It's just me right now since Amelia is currently at Gen Con, but we do have a couple of announcements first. Congratulations goes out to the entire actual play community for winning the Diana Jones Award for Excellence in the Gaming Industry. This is a huge achievement and our own James D'Amato, head of the One Shot Podcast Network, was on site to help accept the award on behalf of everybody. Our episode this past Monday, going over the eight kinds of fun with Jim McClure, has been a big topic of conversation on the Character Creation Cast Discord server. You can join in the fun too at discord.charactercreationcast.com. We'd love to see you there. And as always, if you'd like to support the show and can afford to do so, please head on over to patreon.com slash one-shot podcast and check out the different rewards available. At the $5 level and beyond, you get access to the secret archive, of which we've got some very fun things planned for very soon. Another way you can support the show is to leave us a rating or review. If you head on over to our listing on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, you can go ahead and leave a rating or review there, and then we'll be able to read them out here in the announcements. Plus, they make us feel really great when we get new ones, and that can't be beat. Since I love reveling in these reviews with Amelia, I'll hold off on this next review until next week's opener. And, just before we get into today's bonus episode, you'll notice that it is quite a bit shorter than our normal episodes. We toyed with the format a little bit to give us just a snippet of character creation for this system. Let us know on the Discord, or on Twitter, what you think. Having said all of that, let's get to the show. Enjoy! Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. This is a new segment that we're trying out in order to shine a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we are welcoming Amit to discuss City of Mist, a noir superhero RPG. Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, Amit. It's really great to have you here. Hi, Ryan. How's it going? It's great to be here. Awesome. And uh, could you go ahead and start us off and tell us a bit about yourself and the projects that you are currently involved in? Um, yeah, so I am a game designer and I um, pretty much started the Sun of Oak uh, game studio that's created mostly, or just, City of Mist at this point. We have other plans in the future. Um, and we've been around for about two or three years working on uh, first the starter set, then the Kickstarter the core book, and now uh, the next generation of City of Mist uh, items or products. Oh, very cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. A pleasure. Yeah, and normally Amelia would be here to help, but with Gen Con being the week of this recording, uh, that just means that it'll be me here with our guest. Uh, and since this is an unbridged version of our normal format, we'll just be sticking to the highlights of the system with a special focus on character creation. So, without further ado, how about we find out what this game is all about? What's in a game? All right, so Amit, uh, could you go ahead and give us a quick rundown of what the setting is for City of Mist? Yeah, so City of Mist is a, is a noir urban fantasy kind of, um, kind of game. Um, it's set in a city where ordinary people gain legendary powers. Basically, legends incarnate in... You know, everyday people, you know, people on the street, from the plumber to the executive, uh, from the, I don't know, the housewife to, um, to the crook or the detective. So, uh, basically anyone in the city could have a legend uh, incarnated in them and they gain the power of that legend. So you have uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, could incarnate, um, uh, in, in a hobo on the street and, <laughs> King Arthur <laughs> could be a seven-year-old uh, uh, girl. Uh, oh, so, wow. um, so yeah. So this this is City of Mist, and the, what's um, 
kind of special about the city is that uh, there is a mystical veil hiding all these legends from uh, those people who still did not awaken to their own legends. So um, there's this kind of underworld, the hidden underworld of uh, crime and magic of uh, these um, basically super powered or supernaturally powered uh, people. Um, discovering gradually that the whole city is really controlled by legends. Oh, wow. uh, and meanwhile, everyone else is running a normal life in a modern day city. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is actually <laughs> quite crazy. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, so basically, you play uh, Rifts, uh, who are um, people who have awoken to their legend inside them, and they have a lot of questions. But everything is kind of hard to put together because there is this mystical veil, the mist, and it's hiding everything. And, and you, you're not really sure if someone you're looking at the street, uh, you know, if these are horns they have, or is it just like some costume or some cosplay, or mm -hmm. or is that person wearing a cap or a steel cap? And <laughs> and it's like. Uh, yeah, it's it's there's a lot of investigation, kind of delving into your own story and legend, but of course a lot of action and drama, stuff like that. Oh, that's very cool. And then what sort of things do we need to to play this sort of game? So you can actually pick up the free starter set for City of Mist. You can download the free PDF starter set from our website and start playing. There's uh pre generated characters and uh, kind of the basic rules. You can also pick up the core rulebook if you want to really get into the system, be able to create your own characters and understand all the possibilities uh, that the system offers. Um, all you need is two, um, uh, two six-sided dice, 2d6 basically, because the system is uh, related or an offshoot of Apocalypse World or Dungeon World, as uh, a lot of people know it. So it's powered um, by the Apocalypse then? Exactly. So um, it's only uh, two uh, two six sided dice. It's really simple and straightforward. Uh, and um, you know, our character sheet you can print it out. But we like to, we have a set of cards. We call them theme cards that we use for our character sheets. So uh, that is also something you could pick up. But uh, at the very basic, you just uh, mosey on to our website, download uh, the free starter set, and you, you're you're all set. That's very cool. Yeah, we'll have a, a link to that in the show notes for sure. Okay, uh, and then what do characters do in this game? I know we covered it a little bit in the setting talk. Yeah, so um, characters, Rifts in City of Mist, um, you start as a, as a crew, a crew that, of Rifts that have already discovered that they are legends and they know about each other and they work together for a certain towards a certain goal you can definitely play the part where people get to know each other and discover their powers that's cool but um you start the game with a predefined crew and the crew actually decides what the characters are going to do so you have some options for different crews in the starter set and and of course a lot more options uh in the core book and how to create your own crew but basically um you know this is a noir detective story where you got it's kind of like, it could be kind of like a little scooby gang kind of thing where you're all trying to discover what the hell is going on in the city you could be <laughs> uh, a team of vigilantes or a private investigation uh, uh, firm that is uh, you know digging into crimes or wrongdoings done by other legends in mortal guys or modern day guys mm -hmm. so um and of course you end up a lot of the time there's a lot of you know showdowns and you end up tackling these people with special powers and so i guess um you could really say that it's it combines investigation it combines uh, drama and it combines action um so yeah the characters if your character is a crew of vigilantes you'll be looking for crime if you're into the mystical side of the city maybe you'll be kind of looking for all kinds of relics or uh, you know, objects that transported from the world of legend. And if you are just maybe um, a bunch of um, friends in high school, then maybe you're just dealing with, you know, life in high school as, while being a, a legend, you know, while being, I don't That's know, awesome. Snow White. So, um, <laughs> so you can really take the game in may very many directions, but it, it will always involve a certain amount of probably action and a certain amount of uh, investigation. That's awesome. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot that is unique about this system. Is there is there anything else that uh, is kind of pretty much just in City of Mists from all the games that you've seen out there before? 
the main th- there's one thing that's kind of I've seen in other games but I really um, very few games and um, I'm I'm really happy we incorporated that is the use of free uh, basically free text tags so city of Mist doesn't have any stats you only have um, a few tags that describe your powers and that allows people to get really creative with uh, sorry not just powers but powers abilities skills personality traits resources allies yeah. everything so you can get really creative uh, obviously some people do the the straightforward stuff like um, strong or smart or has the, the power to shoot I don't know like laser beams out of their eyes mm-hmm uh but a lot of uh, a lot of people also do these little cool little catchphrases like um you know the more the the more you hit me the you know the stronger i get something like that and then oh, cool. you can use these tags just as well as any power or um any attribute and then so it's open to interpretation then on what that sort of ability manifests during play then huh yeah it's definitely open to interpretation but there are very uh it's very structured there are rules so that people don't get into like debates into mm-hmm. that we've we've definitely that was one of the main weaknesses the system could have had and i think we 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 really um kind of try to target that so that it's it definitely is based on interpretation it leaves a lot of room for creativity on how yeah. you incorporate different tags but you don't get kind of like bogged in discussions it's a very clear uh, the tags can be, you know, only one tag can be a broad tag. There's all kinds of, uh, um, you know, um, controls to make it fun and not like a discussion. Right. So the tag thing is a big thing because it means that you can create exactly the character you want. You choose what to highlight. You choose if you want your gear highlighted or your the people around you. And it's it's really, or your powers and abilities, it's really a lot of fun. And the other thing I think is um, that we'll talk about it probably later, but the the kind of stories, uh, the dramatic changes that you see in stories of um, of TV characters and and comic book and graphic novel characters mm-hmm. is built into the system. So you can actually um, have all kinds of dramatic event happen events happen to you. Um, for example, let's say that you know if you can think about when Spider-Man um, loses a love interest or something mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. and then he stops using his powers for a while, or something happens and, um, you know, he gets, uh, he, he has more time in his life, so he starts, I don't know, he starts a new job. All these things yeah. are built into the system, and I'll talk about it later when we get to the character creation. Yeah, it, it sounds a little bit like uh, a blending some aspects from uh, Fate in there. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people have uh, have talked about. Um, actually, I think uh, one one shot podcast have said that this this system uh, kind of like combines the best things about Apocalypse World and and Fate, which I never thought about Fate mm-hmm. when I was creating it, but definitely I see the connection. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, and then let's go ahead and uh, go over what steps do we need to do to actually create characters in this game. Okay, so the first step you uh, you'll take is to after you kind of uh, decide about the nature of the crew and the setting or the specific game you're going to play with the rest of the group. The first step you take for your own character creation is to decide what is your mythos, which is the legend that is in your character, and what is your logos, which is your everyday persona. Mm -hmm. so uh, you can obviously come up with that on your own or you can use the tropes that we have ready they're like little classes um um, so things that are kind of uh typical to a noir story and then things that are typical to legends for example a sun god a sun god a fairy grand fairy godmother and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth or from the logo side things like a detective um what else do we have there you know the the jock the mm-hmm. the bruiser the all all these kinds of characters that uh, you can play uh so once you once you chose these uh two aspects of your character which is a lot of fun cuz you get to combine legends and and uh and kind of real life or modern characters mm-hmm. once you choose that you need you want to choose what is the balance between the mythos and the logos so you get to choose four themes for your character for your okay. character 
And um, But the themes are divided between themes that describe your legendary side and themes that describe your ordinary side. Sure. And you have to choose if you divide it three to one, one to three, or two to two, which is balance okay. if you have if you know if you have the more leg- three legendary um themes you're called a le- and one ordinary you're called a legendary someone who's totally living out their their legend and kind mm-hmm. of gave 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 into it and if you're uh if you have two and two you're a borderliner you're kind of walking the line you're trying to balance these two aspects in your life mm-hmm. and if you have uh, three in favor of your ordinary you're touched so your you know your legend has touched you it's it's there in your life but you're more about um you're more about the ordinary funnily okay. enough i find it a lot more interesting to play the touched characters because they have yeah. a lot more texture you know they have a lot oh, more that, interesting yeah. things mm-hmm. going on they're not just super powered but yeah. um we um, of course the system balances uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you choose either of those. People can't start as actually stronger. They may be stronger in the narrative, in the story, but they're they're not, you know, th- your friend's character is not going to be stronger if they choose more legendary uh, themes than mm-hmm. you do. It's just that your power will shine when you do ordinary things like, you know, this mm-hmm. kind of Jessica Jones style uh, detectiving or... Oh, yes. So, um... Yeah, that's that's the second step. Um, nice. So once you decide that, you have seven types of um, of mythical mythos um, theme books or theme types that you can choose from, mm-hmm. and seven ordinary uh, logos ones. So obviously, in the in the legendary powers, you have things like bastion, which are defensive powers, mobility, movement powers, and so on and so forth. Subver- subversion, which is like illusions. Uh, mm. And you kind of choose to represent that. So let's say that you are uh, Jack, um, you know, Jack the Giant sl- Slayer from Jack mm-hmm. and the Beanstalk. So maybe you choose mobility, a mobility theme to represent the fact that you can f- quickly create uh, beanstalks and kind of jump on them and oh. move around <laughs> using those beanstalks. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe you create some kind of um, a relic, like you have... You can, one of the theme types is that you have a relic, like an object that represents the legend rather than mm-hmm. you. So maybe you have a, the sword with which you slayed a, a giant or something like mm-hmm. that. So you kind of start putting together the legendary side of your character. Nice. And then on the other side, you have things like um, training, possessions, defining relationship, like someone important in your life, defining event, stuff like that. Very cool. Yeah, so is it rounding it off with a lot of the powered by apocalypse relationships sort of things I imagine, right? Yeah, there's also uh, that kind of uh, relationship within the team, but that's another dimension. Your defining relationship could be a team member, but it could also be your community, your oh. loved one, your family, or company you work with, and so on and so forth. Okay. So... That's very cool. So you've chosen your mythos and logos. You've chosen the balance. You've chosen um, exact the exact themes to represent them. And now each of those themes has a little questionnaire with 10 questions. You don't have to answer all of them, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, these questions, basically, they give you... The answer that you give to these questions become your power tags, which are the tags we previously discussed. Okay. So, for example, uh, if you choose the theme book for Bastion, which is protective, defensive powers, the first question is obviously going to be, how does your mythos protect you? Mm-hmm. And then you say, it doesn't have to, it, it could be anything. So, a lot of people would take the physical protection, like, I don't know, I'm a gargoyle. My mythos is a gargoyle, so I can grow, um, you know, stone skin or something mm-hmm. like that. But it could be anything. It could be like magical protection. My mythos is a fairy godmother, so I can actually uh, protect myself and others from evil spells. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily from punches and guns, but... Yeah. So, and you can really uh, diversify with that. So, basically, you follow these uh, theme books, and they help you create your four themes and, you know, gather all your power tags sure so but by the end of character creation you have 12 power tags and you also have some weakness tags which um kind of play against you oh nice um anything specific about the weakness tags you wanted to point out that are kind of interesting uh well the nice thing about weakness tags is that um when whenever anyone invokes them 
mm-hmm. you get a little bit of XP, so to speak, and ah. that theme improves. So after that happens a couple of times, you actually start getting all kinds of improvements uh, for the theme. Uh, you could get a new tag, a new, pa- a new power tag. You can get a new um, special improvements that are unique to this theme. Uh, but yeah, the weakness tags, sometimes you will want to uh, invoke the weakness tag just to have your character grow. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. So you can do that. That's up to the player uh, cool. to choose that. Very nice. I was looking over the uh, the PDF that you had sent me. Uh, just earlier, and we'll put a link to that in the show notes uh, of one of the example uh, characters uh, that are pre-generated. And yeah, it looks really interesting. It's got the four cards and and all the different power tags and the weakness tags there. Uh, Very unique sort of character sheet, uh, if I might say. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, I guess um, there's there's definitely everything I, I talked about, you know, trying to create something that's very flexible. Uh, but also trying to create something that anyone can pick up, you know, um, mm-hmm. not necessarily someone who gets the whole gaming um, math kind of based uh, character mm-hmm. sheets. So and, and this has been really cool. I mean, I've played it with really literally so many different people in so many any walk of life and any age as well. So I've mm-hmm. played it with kids. I've played it with. Uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, senior uh, ladies, so we've had a lot of fun with the system. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Anything else uh, that you'd like to talk about about uh, the character creation process of the system? Um, I think that's it. I mean, um, this as soon as you're kind of through the, with the theme books, the um, you you have the core of your character done. The other thing that you choose uh, during character creation is. Um, you choose mysteries and identities. Mysteries are um, you choose for your for each one of your mythos legendary themes. You choose a mystery, which is a question that your mythos wants you to answer, oh. and then you kind of search for it uh, during the game. And if you find answers, you you um, you um, your care your theme improves. Okay. And then uh, for your ordinary aspects, you have identities, which are um, statements or about your character that your character believes and wants to follow and adhere to. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, when you sacrifice something to adhere to those beliefs, your themes improve. Um, and okay. the other the other aspect is also true. So when you don't do that, the, the themes start deteriorating. Or when you don't follow your mystery and answer these questions, the themes start deteriorating. And that could pretty dramatically change your character and change the balance of um of um ordinary and legendary in your character. Hmm. Well, oh, that's really awesome. Very cool. Um well then how about uh let's talk about your Kickstarter a little bit. I know you've got a, a new Kickstarter that is live right now um as of the yep. release of this episode. And uh is there anything you would like to highlight there that is adding um especially in relation to character creation? Uh yeah, so first of all you can you can get the the core books are now split we're we're going to use this Kickstarter to split the core book into two because the core book contains a lot of information that players don't need. It's basically the player and the GM book put together. Okay. So we're splitting it uh, into two. You can get both of these uh, um aspects of the game um but we wanted to make the player guide more accessible so people can create their own characters more mm-hmm. easily. That's one thing you can get. You can also get um, the 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 campaign is named Knights of Pain Town. That's the main book that we're going to be creating. That's a kind of a campaign book that runs you through um, uh, an entire um, story arc, basically. Mm-hmm. Complete. It's it's like an adventure path. You can just play the, these ten adventures, t- ten cases as we call them. Uh, but the in terms of character creation, probably the expansion that we're also uh, releasing in this Kickstarter. Uh, shadows and showdowns Mm -hmm. that will have um, all kinds of character options that are not in the core book so for example i guess the main thing is that you 
we have like in the setting of city of mist there's an organization a secret organization that is responsible for uh the main maintaining the mist maintaining that mystical veil that is hiding the legends yeah. and that uh organization is is called the gatekeepers and okay. they often hunt legends and try to kind of close those rifts in the mist they want to you know get everyone to to be normal again and uh, you can you will be able to also create a a gatekeeper character if you um i mean if if you have the sh- yeah. uh, shadows and showdowns so we're going to have rules for creating uh kind of like the baddies so you can also oh, play cool. the baddies or not necessarily the baddies but you can also play the other side oh that's very cool so yeah uh, yeah there's there's more more of that that sounds awesome. Well, you got me really excited to make characters for this system, and I, I hope we can sit down soon uh, with you and and uh, hopefully Sydney uh, yeah. of, from Encounter Roleplay to, to create some characters for this thing. Definitely, definitely. Let's really do this. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you, Amit, so much for joining us uh, to talk about City of Mist. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been it's been really awesome learning about this game, and I'm really excited for it. Could you go ahead and remind everyone uh, any other things that you're working on and where they can find you online? So, of course, there's the Kickstarter. You can find it by looking for City of Mist or Knights of Pain Town with a Y on Kickstarter. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter. We have a Discord channel uh, server. Uh, you can find us. We have a subreddit. So you can really uh, find us wherever. Instagram, Google+, Plus, of course. So just if you look for City of Mist, you'll find us easy enough. Very cool. And we'll put the links to those in the show notes. Well, thank you so much for joining us for a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you. Character Creation Spotlight, like Character Creation Cast, is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. The Campaign Podcast is an actual play podcast where a small, consistent group of Chicago nerds get together to record role-playing games. It's hosted by Cat Cool and is currently set in the Star Wars universe using the Edge of the Empire gaming system. Join Kat as she leads a team of improvisers, James D'Amato, John Patrick Cohen, and Johnny O'Mara, on a character-driven storytelling campaign narrative.